Viviana, you have traveled the world. You even came to uh, Suyong Pega Mai Flute Festival in Korea a couple yes. of years ago. Yes. And you do so many interviews with flute players around the world. Yes. So I think now is the time to do an interview with you. <laughs> so we are here at the beautiful Sir James uh, Galway Flute Festival, the yeah. 30th edition. Yes. Um, this is also your um, third time to come here? I no, think? it's just my second time. second time. I was here two years ago. Yeah. And what do you take away from? From this I, I, for me, this is a shot of inspiration. It's just right into the veins, you know, and it inspires me for until I get here again. <laughs> it just makes me want to practice. I just get so f jazzed by all the different players and, the, of course, Sir James and Lady Jeannie. Everything, everyone inspires me just so much. So what is the most important thing you learned from Sir James Galway? From Sir James Galway, his sound is just so um, focused and penetrating and so unique. And I think I, I have loved the warm-ups here because he goes right to his, his sound. We work on the sound and that's what I think I've learned the most. Uh, every night we have different performers, at least two, sometimes ten, you know, and it's just wonderful how everyone gets together and it, it's really a, a flute salad of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> now you travel extremely much also to countries which maybe don't have this specific flute yes. scene. Yes. Um, what was your experiences, especially from countries which maybe are not especially famous for, for a big flute community, what did you take from these countries? I actually love visiting new countries because if I go back to the same country, it's almost a little bit boring. So I like to collect countries. And when a country, my next country, I'm going to be going to Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan, playing with the orchestras there and then teaching master classes. So I'm just excited about hearing their own music in addition to their flute uh, playing. I'll see how, how the level is and I'm sure it's wonderful. It uh, comes the back background is very Russian so I'm sure it will be quite wonderful in South America I, I you know there's so much music in in Brazil so much flute music and then so much flute music in Argentina that's almost or in Venezuela or in Colombia each country has has a different because I think the conquistadors came with the Renaissance music which had a lot of recorder uh, flute music and then it just court, sort of evolved and became what is now Brazil Brazilian music and Argentinian music and the tango and the samba and the cumbia and I just love love learning about all the different styles. I feel that it's interesting, interesting that you say that because I feel that in many countries the origin of the language or the flute influences a lot how people play like Sir James who played the Irish flute. Oh right, kid, yes. Or uh, teaching Korea the language or in Hungary yeah. like languages and culture influence a lot our concept of sound. Absolutely. So what yeah. would you say uh, because you just mentioned the American school of playing. I studied yeah. in America also for two years and I always wondered uh, what would you say is the specifics of the American school of playing in comparison for example to the general European way hmm. of playing? I studied in master class with Sir James but I studied with Julius Baker, principal flutist of the New York Philharmonic and he was at the Juilliard school and I would say his emphasis was all, oh, he would always just say faster, louder, faster, louder. So it was a great um, he was just a great master and a great inspiration for um, getting a lot of technique under under hands. Uh, my other big teacher was uh, Albert Tipton, who was principal flutist of the St. Louis and Detroit Symphony Orchestras. And with him, I very much learned the importance of intonation. So I always, uh, in master classes when I'm invited, I like to include a just intonation, or um, the, it's the most uh, pure sort of intonation because that's what he installed in me and I think is uh, a key way of producing the sound. What is your next three great uh, projects coming up? Projects? Well, I always have Flutes by the Sea uh, in Half Moon Bay, California and I hope to bring this lovely guest artist next. <laughs> And uh, let's see, what am I doing? I'm going to Uzbekistan and Kyrgyzstan playing with orchestras. I'm also then going to Peru and Chile and Bermuda and Manaus and Brazil. And I'm just, I love traveling. And so thank 
I always uh, thank the powers that I get to do a lot of traveling because I feel I get inspired with, by my travels and the people that I meet. One last question. Yes. You're famous for your incredibly interesting and challenging music videos. What's your next music video coming up? Oh, you know, I just re I have an 11 year old niece and I did all her favorite pop songs. That was my latest album and I've just been doing releasing different uh, videos from those uh, pop songs that she likes. It's mainly a, 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 a project for her because I just adore her. Um, apart from that, tango. Actually, I want to do the tango etudes by Piazzolla um, because I, I tend to perform a lot of South American music. It's, it's one of my signature things. So. You should include the Garde from yesterday. Yes, I love it. It's a jealousy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That was fabulous. Well, it was a pleasure to talk to you. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Philip. <laughs> Bye. Bye. -bye.